Hello and welcome to More Than Mondays, a podcast for believers by believers to encourage, challenge, and shift the perspective as we go throughout our week. On this week's episode, we have my brother-in-law, Adrian Ramirez, talking to us a little bit more about what it means to be a leader in the kingdom of heaven. I hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, I am so excited this week. I am interviewing my brother-in-law, Adrian Ramirez. Um, he is my brother-in-law, but he's been in my life since I was 12. Yeah, around there. So more, 28, <laughs> uh, 18 years. Wow, math is hard for me. Long time. Um, but so we've been brothers for as long as I can remember. Uh, I'm so grateful for his influence and impact in my life. He's been an amazing man. And I'm really excited to have you on more than Mondays this week. And um, before I go on and on about you like I could, I want you to share a little bit more about yourself. Uh, a little bit about me. So born and raised in Lubbock. Mm-hmm. Good old Lubbock, Texas, where the where everybody that's never mind. Uh, so I've been married to your sister for uh, going on sixteen years. We got five kiddos, three of them are our biological daughters. So we got a fifteen, fourteen, and twelve. Mm-hmm. I think that's the I think or oh, fourteen, thirteen, and twelve. No, nope, fifteen. Fifteen, fourteen, and twelve. That's what I meant. I was checking you. <laughs> Um, See if I was good uncle, yeah. I get it. And then we got uh, two kiddos who we've adopted. Uh, one is two years old. His name is Ford, and then the other one's coming up, and uh, she will be adopted in September of this year. So on my birthday, actually. So yeah, pretty cool. so, that is really cool. Yeah, I'm a pastor. I've been working at Life Church for about two and a half years, and uh, it's been great. So it's been awesome. That's awesome. And um, just your insight and wisdom like into the topic that we're talk- covering today, leadership. Um, you're somebody that I've looked up to as a leader in my life as I've walked with the Lord. Um, somebody that I saw a great example of what that looked like even before I started walking with the Lord. So I thought this was a perfect episode and me being down here in Oklahoma City, it was just the perfect time uh, to get you on to have you talk to us a little bit more about what it means to be a leader, especially as a believer. But with your posture and your position, you know, You've led in so many different ways in your life. You lead currently, you lead as a husband, as a father, you lead as a pastor, you lead as a brother-in-law, and you lead um, just in every area and every facet of your life, you lead so well. So I, you know, it's important to me to have you on here. And as we get this conversation started, I just, that term leadership comes up over and over again, I think in the church world and and even outside of the church world and the secular world. Um, But to you, what does that term leadership mean? Man. That's a that's a loaded question. It's just it's a great question. Leadership can be so many different things, but uh, for me personally, I think it's just being um, for me leading my family is where are we going uh, with vision? Where are we going with just every single aspect? Um, leading my family and me being the true leader of my home, knowing that I'm not perfect, knowing that I have to have Christ in, in my life and Him Him guiding me, mm-hmm. but uh, just stepping up and being that courageous person in the lives of my family, uh, which is our first ministry. Um, that's probably the biggest leadership position for me um, ever. I mean, besides even ministry. Ministry is great. It's fun and you get to impact a lot of people, but the most important people we should be impacting is our, is our families. Yeah. And so that's my first ministry. And that's, you know, leadership is just um, people can follow you and you may be the most corrupted person in the world and you can be considered to have great leadership skills right yeah so i just think it's uh oh man there's so many things i can say about leadership you know consistency integrity you know you have that vision um you don't necessarily have to be an extrovert you can be an introvert and lead yeah. uh, it's just so many things about leadership that uh that um that can take you different places you know what i mean yeah it, it's all in the motives it's all what you have in your heart, what you talk, it's your calling, mm-hmm. your personality. Um, there's so many different facets and sides to leadership that it's a, uh, um, but I guess that's what it means. If that makes sense, does that make yeah. any sense? Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And so, as you said, I, I, you see leaders in the world um, and you see leaders in the church and there's motives. And, and I think Paul even talks about people who are even speaking on Christ's behalf where there's some people that are doing it for the purpose of sharing the gospel and some out of their own personal motives and um, um, desires. I don't know the exact wording he uses, but it, it's more of a selfish desire. And he says, either way, um, I'm going to let them keep continue preaching Christ. Um, what it, 
to you is the importance of those motives. How did you shift your motives in your life to realizing, you know, my family comes first, then my church ministry and all this stuff because um, Christ lives in me and he's leading me as a non-perfect person. Like, how did you begin to see that shift and how did you begin to, you know, really own that leadership position? So that would have to take me back to where I kind of grew up. Um, I grew up in the church. Um, we were in a, in, in, in a den denominational church. I won't say the denomination just because I don't, don't want to say it. Um, not that it's bad or nothing. Right. I just, you know, just, just keep it neutral. Yes. But um, so I grew up in this certain church and, and um, there's a whole bunch of laws that you had to follow and you had to do this, you had to do that, you had to wear a suit, you had to do all these different things. And so I think that um, through leadership, um, everybody thinks that it has to, there's just certain limelight about it that you have to be, um, that it's about this or it's about that or it's about a position or it's about God's called me, right? Yeah. And I think what, what slapped me around um, was later on in that same church, um, I got to be a, a, an outreach, um, kind of like an assistant director for that outreach program and their youth program. And what really changed me was God switched my perspective of leadership as to where are you leading people, right? That's what leadership is about, leading people. But yeah. Um, it's not just any person. It, you're not just leading people at the church. For me, it's you're leading people um, outside of the church. So it's about people. Um, it's about people inside the church. It's about people outside the church. And so there's there's two different perspectives. Um, and I think you can do ministry both ways. Yeah. Um, um, but I think, again, and now this is just my opinion, um, but I think we're made to lead um, for to, to, to present Christ's gospel yeah um, and so what what is the what is the real difference that you're making if you're just leading the same people every Sunday mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah. right um, and so I I think that the church the Western church has, has turned this leadership thing into more of a positional thing hey I'm wow. a pastor yeah hey I am this hey I have this many people in my ministry um, but you're com we've we've completely uh, most have completely alienated the people outside the walls of the church. Yeah. And so and 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 the Bible says that you know we're supposed to go out, go out and preach the gospel or, mm. or even just share his gospel or love on people. Yeah. And that's how I think as leadership, if 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 you, if if you're called into leadership, that has to be a, the the biggest part of it. Yeah. Um, integrity, yes. Um, vision, yes, but mostly heart for the lost. I think, in my opinion, is, is 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 a must. Yeah. And if it's not, then, in my opinion, you're probably doing it for a positional thing, or yeah. a feel good thing, or yeah. uh, you know, or a power hungry thing. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's about people. Um, I told you this story before. Um, Levi Lusco was was at our church. We had this big thing called family reunion where all the churches get together all the campus leaderships and pastors and everybody yeah. that works behind the scenes all get together in one uh, uh, here uh, at one campus here in Oklahoma City. And he said that um, um, we have, there's a responsibility that we have. And he said it like this. He said, we are going to care for what Jesus died for. Mm. And so that made everybody quiet because I think there's a lot of people, um, not this, not maybe even in, in our own church who are there for a positional thing, yeah, and not for a people thing, and that's yeah. what it's about. That's what he's referring to. Yeah, Christ died for people. Yes, yeah. He, he didn't die for the for for a beautiful building. He didn't die for um, cars and trucks and a house and he didn't die for all that. That that's just kind of the cherry on top on some yeah. things, right? Yeah. Or that's just you know earthly living and, and desires, but. He died for people, and yeah. so that's why I think everything should be centered around that. Whether it's leadership, whether it's you being a pastor, and 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 and, and that's the other thing too. Yeah. I know I'm going everywhere, every which way, but there's a difference between a leader and a pastor. And I think you can be a great leader, but you can be a horrible pastor. Mm -hmm. And I think you can be a great pastor, but you can kind of be a horrible leader. Yeah. And so um, I've seen the differences in people. I've seen some of those things happen in my own life where I had to be developed. In, in, in certain ways to become a better pastor so that I can be a, a more effective leader. Yeah. And some people are great pastors, but they needed to be developed to be a good leader so people would follow them. Yeah. Um, and so, but again, the, the, I think the main piece that connects all of it is people. 
Yeah. Not the same people every single week. I think it's the, the people that are outside of the, the, the walls of the church, the, the new people, the new families that are coming in to your buildings or to your homes or to wherever you, you're having your services at. Yeah. Um, if you're not leading um, people to lead them or if you're not leading those people to Christ, mm -hmm. um, I think you've kind of missed the, the mark. I mean, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, no. And I think it's it's really important what you're saying is it's so um, selfless, right? Yeah. Everything you said was there's there's two sides to leadership. There's there's the position. There's the leverage. There's the all the stuff. There's there's the what I look like and how I present myself. Like I'm a pastor. That's a selfish motive. And when you're able to shift and understand like like what Levi Lesko was saying, like it's actually people that we're supposed to be influencing it's it's a selfless motive you know it's it's shifting out of this position of saying i'm doing this because i i want to do this i want to stand on stage and speak or i want to have influence or i want to run a small group or i want to do whatever that may look like for you in your walk with the lord to i want to do what's best for the people that that god has trusted me with because as believers god has entrusted us to reach people to be in contact with people that that you as a pastor may never ever see that somebody on your host team goes and interacts with every day at work. Yeah. You may never interact with them, but it's their job to be a leader to that person or people that they're around. And it's gotta come from a place of, of selflessness, of, yeah. of man, it, it's what did Jesus die for? Well, he died to save all of humanity from the broken fallen nature of sin that kept it came into the world it was a restorative act to himself and to the father excuse me but when, when we see it as i want to be in the limelight i want to have ten thousand followers on instagram i want to influence is important but you always have influence it's what are you doing with your influence right now especially as a leader and i think that's so uh, important and kind of leads me into this next question that I wanted to kind of talk to you about is how did you know that that you were called to be a leader like was it something that happened maybe when you were in high school on a football team and you realized you were able to influence guys and or is it you know what was your story of realizing like man I'm a leader yeah for, for the longest time I think in my life I, I was really a follower mm. um, I, and uh, um, I did a bunch of dumb stuff in high school and after high school and 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 some people followed me uh, but that didn't necessarily click to me as, oh man, you're, you're, you're called to be a leader until this one guy, um, we were at, um, my church in Lubbock, my old home church. And, um, we were having this, his name was Ted and he was a minister and he came up and he just said, Hey man, I don't know. This is kind of crazy. He goes, but God gave me a message to you. And he just said, Hey, people are going to follow you and you, you God's calling you into the ministry. He goes, mm -hmm. so he's switching your heart around. And so, um, from that point on I kind of was like I guess I'm called to be a leader now you know yeah I didn't know what that looked like um, I still needed to be developed um, but I had that um, that's when I really got involved with my youth group and everything else and then that's whenever I got into that position of outreach an outreach kind of director or whatever it was um, that's what really shaped everything for me was oh man it's about people yeah and so um, I didn't necessarily a lot of people dive in and go to like um, different types of schools and all that to be better leaders or to be better at this or that or, or whatever. And, uh, and I went to, to that, but it was kind of a, uh, I just knew right then and there that I was called into ministry and automatically, you know, if you're calling into ministry, you, you're going to have to be a part of leadership. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. You're leading people. Yeah. And so some of that was just like, um, what type of leader am I? Yeah. You know, yeah. Am I this funny guy who leads with humor or am I going to be this guy who leads with passion? Am I going to be this guy who leads with straight up, just nothing but scripture and which is great too, but sometimes, yeah. you know, and, but instead um, I, my leadership style is very much reality based. And so I'm going to lead you. I'm going to accept you. Um, and the thing is, 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 is again, we're dealing with people, yeah. right? God's yeah. called brokenness into the church. He's called people to him. So we're going to deal with all the junk from outside that's going to come into the church. And we have to be the church to them. Yeah. So you, um, 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 you have to be able to love them through all of this. Yeah. And so that's my reality-based stuff is I've had guys come in and say, man, I don't know what's happening, man. This is the third time they call me smoking marijuana. And I'm like, 
probably stop smoking marijuana, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Or right. the guy was like, man, I'm going to lose my family because I, I, I've been an alcoholic for, the, for for 10 years now. And I'm like, what's happened during those 10 years that you, you know, that, that, that's, that's changed you or what needs to change in your life to make you, you know what I mean? And so we, you have to instill reality. Yeah. You instill Jesus, you instill scripture, but you have to be re realistic. You can't, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of leaders out there who like to put the baby powder on the hand yeah. and change the diaper and put the baby powder on the butt and just baby people along yeah. and, and not get in the weeds. Right. And so, and I think that's a horrible, a horrible mistake. I think you have to get in the weeds with people yeah. and in order to make an impact on somebody, a real impact on somebody is you're going to call them and say, Hey man, maybe you should stop doing this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you should be a man and step up and lead your family. Right. Maybe you should ch stop cheating on your husband or, or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, where it's not just baby powder on the butt, but it's real leadership. Truth. Yes. And we talked about truth a couple of days ago about yeah. it being cutting and it gets right to the, to the point. Right. Yes. And I think that's what's needed. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, not harsh, you know, you have to be a people person and you have yeah. to know the situations that you're dealing with. It's another part of being a leader. Yeah. But it's one of those things that you have to, you have to take it as a re for me, I have to be realistic in my approach real world stuff and then back it up with scripture with prayer with jesus right everything is but then you just have to be real with people yeah. people don't want to hear um a lot of the uh, i think people have built up this thing with with pastors about you know oh pastor's perfect over here and pastors have uh well, well the bible says you know yeah. and they, they they feel like they're being judged instead of being loved mm -hmm. and so i think true love is just being truthful right to the point, being re, uh, reality-based. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of that leadership style. When I, when I knew that I was going to be a leader or a pastor or yeah. in the ministry, I knew I don't want to be like everybody else. Yeah, I don't want to be the guy who changes his voice and said, for God so loved the world. And, you know, I'm going I'm to talk to you like I talk to you. Yeah. Bro, you are doing a horrible job. You know, let's, let's get this together. Let's get back on track. You know, the Bible says this and this and that. Jesus has said, you're the head, not the tail. Yeah. Let's get this by the by, by the head and let, let's go. And, yeah. And let, let, let's fix this. Let's get back mm. on track. And so, but instead, a lot of people take the opposite angles. And uh, yeah. And, and so, but I, I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yeah. But that's just kind of, I, I'm just really passionate about that because I think there's so many, um, uh, for lack of better words or lack of words, period, you know, there's just that baby powder mentality. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. People need truth. For sure. Because it's going to set them free. One hundred percent. Truth sets you free. And I think one thing that I've really learned in leadership, and as I've progressed, and I mean, talking to people, and even my own journey of making errors and mistakes, and watching the way leaders treated me, and me going, "What? How are you saying this to me? How are you treating me like this? Because this doesn't line up with what Jesus talks about. Like this doesn't line up with." how Paul addresses people in the church or how Paul addresses sin in, in, within our, our body of Christ. And, and the reality that I've found is a lot of my issues and a lot of other people's issues, like you're talking about like alcoholism, lust, like um, drug addiction, you know, anger problems, whatever it may be, is really what I've realized is more, it's just like the fruit of a tree. It's the thing that develops that we can all see. And so we go in as leaders and say, we need to stop that. But when you like what you're saying is you get in the weeds, you don't stay up at, at the root or at the, at the fruit of the problem. You right. go to the weeds and find out like, okay, like you were talking about it, that, that gentleman that said, I've been an alcoholic for 10 years. Well, what's been going on this 10 years? Like what's happening yeah. inside of you? You're getting to the root of the issue. You're not saying quit drinking alcohol and everything's going to be better. Yeah. It's like, Quit drinking alcohol, yes, but what's actually going on? Yeah, yeah you, 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 we have to walk them. We have to walk with them. Yeah. And so a lot of a lot of people tend to rely on the, um, well, let's get you signed up with these resources, and we're they're going to walk you through this. We can walk it with, with them. Yeah. I mean, what better way to make an impact on an individual than you walking it through them? I, I, I met with a guy. Um, who's having some marriage issues. And I met with him for 12, 13 weeks, every Wednesday for two hours. Yeah. And we met and, and, and we talked and everything else. And, and, um, and it's just one of those deals that, you know, if you're not willing to put in the time for people, 
then yeah. why are you really doing it? You know what yeah. I mean? And so I think it's very important that 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 we that we remember our, our why. You know, is your why just your calling? If it is, then you need to reevaluate. Um, is it is your why because of your position? Probably should reevaluate. If your why is because of people and surrounding people, then you're probably on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. So one hundred percent. And and so I, I really you know you know. You know, Jesus was was Jesus was in was in in the middle of everybody. Yeah, he, he wasn't up at the church singing hymnals. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was he was in, in the midst of everybody. He didn't care if you were a leper. He even touched the leper. People were like, man, you're crazy. Yeah, he did it anyway. Yeah, and and he was you know he raised he made people see again and everything else. And that didn't happen at the steps of the church. You know what I mean? It, it yeah. happened on, on the streets. He was amongst the people. Yeah, and so I think that um, we need to. I think we need to recenter sometimes, even myself sometimes. We have to recenter ourselves back to why we do what we do. Yes, we do it because we're called. Yes, we do it because we're pastors, but we do it mostly because of people. Yeah, we love 100%. People. And I think that's like, especially when we're as leaders in, in a church, as, as a pastor, as you are, and, and even, you know, lay volunteers and other pastors and, and apostles and prophets and teachers and, and evangelists are in the church. The Bible tells us that their job is actually to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So you are actually leading people to equip them for the work of ministry. You know, so um, as as you're saying, we're all called to the ministry, quote yeah. unquote. Our ministry just may be the, the uh, accounting firm that we work at or the basketball court we officiate at or the high school we teach at. Like it could be anywhere, the school we go to, whatever it looks like, your ministry is what God has put you in and, and through it. So um, as we lead people, it's important. And then for some reason, and this happened to me all the time, I remember looking up at pastors that, that were at my home church in Kansas City that were, you know, um, whether it's Pastor Craig or Pastor Stephen Furtick or Pastor, you know, even Levi Lesko, and my pastors in California, I look at them and I'm like, oh, they got it all together. They know what's going on. And the reality is they're just people too. You're just a, you're just a man. I'm just a man. And we're, fill, we're infilled with the Holy Spirit. We do operate, act, and, and respond differently than just an average person on the street. Um, but we still go through things. We yeah. still go through struggles. So mm -hmm. how do you as a pastor, as a leader of people, as a leader of your family? How do you handle um, leading people even in the midst of your own struggle? So in my struggle, so I will, let me tag on to that last, yeah. and then I, it'll plug into this question. So yeah. um, on our host team, we have about two or 300 volunteers and um, we have a huddle at every single service time. And we talk about, hey, let's go out there and get them. Let's go out there and serve with a smile and all this stuff. But one of the things that I've really instilled in my team is, is that, um, Ministry doesn't just happen on Sundays. Mm -hmm. And every time I pray, I say, God, thank you for letting us do this. Not just on Sundays, but every single day. Yeah. And so I tell people, we give out invites and say, who are you inviting to church? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to sit with that church that hasn't been here before? Right. Um, so um, 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 I think we have to lead our people that way. Because if we're not doing it ourselves, yeah, they're not going to follow us in that way either. Yeah. And so um, it's important to, to make sure that whatever ministry you're in or your volunteers, or maybe you are a volunteer and maybe you feel this, maybe your pastor needs to be doing it. Have a conversation with them. Say, hey, man, I would really love for us to get back on the bandwagon of inviting the people back to church or being involved in our community. Yeah. Um, and because those are great conversations and those conversations might actually lead to actually leading your pastor back to where he should be. Cause sometimes we get caught up just like everybody else too. Yeah. Um, and so don't be afraid to just reach out and, and talk to your pastors. And the second thing is, is that um, development. Um, and I, I, I didn't talk about this is if, if you are a leader, if you are a pastor, you cannot place development on the back burner. You need to be reading books. You need to be better at communication. You need to be yeah. better at, at everything. You should be prayed up and reading your Bible re regardless, but um, reading books, develop yourself, own your own development, um, and don't rely on everybody else, you know, get something fresh yeah. from, from your prayer times. So don't stop being developed and, um, reach out to your pastors. Um, and pastors, if you're, if you're watching this, um, maybe, maybe we need to pray and say, man, God, I need to refocus back to leading my people back to 
what we're supposed to be doing, and that's about the people. Yeah. Not just serving on Sundays, but yeah. actually reaching out and being involved in our communities and, and outreaching. So mm -hmm. now, now, as far as the struggles part, I've struggled with that. Um, some of the struggles that I've dealt with is, you know, frustration. You know, why are people not listening to what I'm, new, I'm asking them to do? And then I have to respond to myself with, okay, am I communicating properly? Um, am I doing it myself? <laughs> Am I talking it and walking it, or am I just talking it and yeah. expecting them to walk it? Yeah. And that's usually, those don't go hand in hand. You, if you're gonna talk it, you have to walk it. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I said about the, the invites. If yeah. we're not doing it ourselves, we can't expect our flock to do it either. Yeah. Um, and struggles, you know, uh, you know, the, one of the biggest struggles for me is I, I have a full load with my family alone. And so I gotta make sure that you know, when I am, am leading people on Sundays or during the week, that when I bring it home, that I don't bring it home. Yeah. That it cuts off at four o'clock. You uh, know, people know already that they're not going to probably reach me past four o'clock unless it's like the campus pastor, you know, yeah. um, um, or on or on my Sabbath day, which is on a Friday. Um, if you're going to call me, you're probably not going to get a call back unless it's a very, very um, important thing that I listen to on the voicemail. You're probably not going to get a call back. Um, and so I, I try really hard to keep ministry here and then my family time is my family time. Yeah. Um, and it's made a world of difference with my relationship with my girls, with my wife, with everybody. Yeah. Um, so um, will, will that always happen? No. I mean, there's going to be some times where it mixes. That's just part of it. But I do my best to try to keep those separate. Um, but, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is with struggles, the hard part is that <clears throat> there's expectations, right? of you're going through this and they expect you to keep performing at this level yeah and that's a struggle sometimes right yeah the thing that helps me um personally is that i'm vulnerable with my leaders so i have six coaches because we have six different service times yeah and i don't hold back so man i am you know my daughter is sick and i've been doing this i am tired mentally i cannot think right now i'm gonna have you guys do huddle this week yeah this is the topic i want you guys to cover and um, you just be open and vulnerable and transparent with your leaders. That's going to, the feedback that you're going to get from that's going to be trust. They trust where you're at spiritually. They know that you're not perfect. It's going to make your equity go sky high because they know that you're human too. Yeah. You're not Mr. All High Mighty Pastor. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're their friend. Um, and so, and that's just not a motive thing of like, why well, I got to be vulnerable. So I, I do that because that's just who I am. Yeah. I want them to know where I'm at. I want them to know where I'm coming from. I want them to know why I may be a little quiet. Um, and so <clears throat> uh, last year, my brother passed away. Um, and uh, man, I was out for, I think it was three weeks. And I continued to talk with my coaches every weekend. And through those weeks, and I just said, hey man, I'm feeling it. You know, I don't, I don't feel like being in church right now. I was like, yeah. I'm, I'm struggling. I was like, I'm praying I'm not feeling feeling it. Yeah. really open with my, with my coaches and my leaders and they responded back with phenomenal leadership you know yeah. they led their teams awesome they led prayer groups for me and my family it was amazing um, but yeah. that's the, that's the fruit of me being vulnerable and open and me being real with them yeah 100 percent reality-based leadership you know? yeah I love that because it, it takes the pressure off the reality of of Man, I'm struggling, but I still have to be here. Because the reality is, you as a pastor, when you surround yourself with great teams, and and me as as just a a, a podcaster and and a salesperson right now, you know, I have to surround myself with great people. That when I when I'm leading others and and you know leading the youth group and even the parking team for for the weekends, like I have to I have to be okay with not being okay. Yeah. Like I have to be okay with that. I don't have to perform just to perform. God doesn't want me to perform. He wants me to just be. Yeah. Because then it's just like you just said, it's, it's, it's a, it's a performance. Yeah. It's not the real you and people will catch on to that. Yeah. I mean, people, even the people who are the most unsensitive people in the world that are on your team, they will catch on to it. That bro is being fake. And yes. I know, and then they'll, blah, 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 to somebody else or whatever, but I'd rather just be reality-based, let everybody know where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. Not that I'm being a turd or nothing like that. Right, you know, right. Like, but that way they know, and that way we're all a family, you know. Um, yeah. It's just one of them deals where um, if, if you're open and, and honest and, and real with people, 
people are going to be open, honest, and real with you too. And through all those things, I've, I've learned a lot of different stories from people. Um, I, I went up to a lady who served on our host team and I was open about uh, my past failures as a, as a person, not as a pastor, right? <laughs> right. my past life and some of the dumb things I did. I was very open with her and everything else. And, and she said, hey, I'm going to tell you something. Um, her name's Kim. And she said, um, um, and I went, this is how the whole conversation started. It's last summer, it's about 98 degrees. And I go, hey, man, it's 98 degrees, Kim. What are you doing with your sweater on, girl? And she said, Adrian, she's like, I just love my sweater. And then so that we left it at that. The next week she came back, she goes, you know, you were open with your brother and stuff. And I need to be open with you about something. I said, okay, what's up? She was like, the reason I wear my sweater is because I cut and I used to cut for years and not across. She said, I would cut from wrist to elbow. Oh, and yeah. she has massive scars everywhere. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of embarrassed. And then after we shared and we talked and I prayed with her and she told me she would love serving a host team because she gives, she, she, she likes to give smiles because of the smiles that were given to her in her times of depression and when mm -hmm. she was cutting. Yeah. And so the, the, one of the cool parts is that she was probably the, our number one at that time before COVID. <laughs> um, she was probably our number one inviter. Yeah. She'd bring people to church, say, Hey, I can't make it to the after huddle thing that we have during the message because I'm going to sit with my friend that I invited to church. Yeah. And she was inviting constantly. And mm -hmm. so it's just things like that, man. When you're real with people and you're honest with people, it leads to conversations, leads to more freedom, leads to know their story and leads to know their testimony. And it, it, it it's going to propel them. Yeah. And it's going to propel us too. Cause it's yeah. like, wow, that's serving on our host team. Yeah. They're making a difference and, and they don't even really know it, you know? Yeah. But, um, that's just, awesome. just, just, you know, some of that, that's another, there's other stories in here that are crazy. Um, but just reality-based leadership, I think is, 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 is really good. And, it, and you kind of touched on our, our final, our final question quite a bit in, um, the reality-based leadership and having vulnerability and, and it allows people to open up to you. And, and you talked about going in the weeds with them and, and walking them out. But when somebody who you you would trust with your team comes to you with a sin struggle what is your response to them how do you walk them through that as you're walking with them as you're talking to them because you, like you said you you give them truth you tell them but you don't say hey you need to cut it out figure it out and then wait a month to have another conversation with them you say you get in the weeds with them what's something that that you found that's really effective as a leader for those people first of all you have to be prayed up and ready mm -hmm. um because Things will pop up on the fly. Yeah. Um, I had a, a guy who serves on our team who has had a past with, with girls, um, nothing like illegal or nothing like that. Yeah. But he just, he, he had a self-esteem issue. And so he would get with these girls and, you know, he would sleep with them. Yeah. And, um, and then so finally that came to the surface um, uh, that was going on for a few, for a few months, not only at our campus, but somewhere else. Yeah. And then so that came to the surface and he just straight up told me um, that what had happened. And so, you know, some people's first instinct, um, instinct is you're done. You're off my team. Get off my team. Yeah. You know, this guy was a leader. He was trying to hide this in. And it came out. And so the first thing that I did is like that wanted to bubble up inside me like you, man, dude, you, what's wrong with you, bro? Yeah. And so, but I didn't do that. What I did is I sat down with him and I said, okay, you're a leader. You know, you're not supposed to be doing this. Yeah. I was like, so here's a couple of things that, that you have two options. I was like, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, because you're a leader and that's a spiritual thing, we're going to, you're not going to be a leader for a while. Yeah. Um, you need to go through this kind of like this detox of, you need to go talk to somebody in counseling. I was like, we're going to go through a Bible plan together and we're going to meet every Sunday for five or ten minutes and we're gonna, you're gonna we're gonna talk and so we did that for eight weeks mm. um and then he still wasn't a leader then and about two months uh no i'm sorry in uh in november last year he took his lead position back and then he came up to me kind of in tears you know he's got a girlfriend now and they're doing great they're about to be married yeah um it's, it's really good really great but he said man thank you for doing that he goes because everybody else would just kick me out yeah he goes, you took the time to actually love 
me through it. You actually took the time to develop me through it. You actually took the time to speak truth into me. And it wasn't just that, well, here's a, go talk to somebody and let me know what happened or you're off the team, get off the team. Um, we have to remember that. Yeah. We're dealing with people. Yeah. Broken people. Yeah. Um, there's funny, this lady came in the other day and said, hey, I'm gonna join the host team. I'm so excited, blah, blah, blah. She goes, I just don't want any drama. And I'm like, well, you're at the wrong spot. Yeah. I was like, cause church is full of drama. Uh -huh. You got the best of the best and the worst of the worst all in one spot. Yeah. And people were gonna butt heads, right? And so I said, hey, let me tell you something about the host team and blah, 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 we went on. And so I say that just to say, you know, it's about people. People mm -hmm. aren't perfect. They're gonna come in with all their junk, with all their habits, uh, they're with not being perfect, just like we are. Yeah. And except theirs is like 10 times magnified because they don't have, they haven't been developed yet or they haven't d dove into a relationship with Christ. Yeah. And so you have to, you have to recognize that yes, there's leadership, um, spirituality behind that leadership and removing him from those positions. But there's also, he's, he's just as important. His soul is just as important his soul has an eternity and that's just as important as somebody coming in off the street. Yeah. And so there's that type of leadership too, where you have to recognize that people are not perfect. People are going to fail and you cannot just write them off and say, I'm done with you. No, that's not what we're called to do. Right. We're called to love people, develop people and love them through all of their junk. Yeah. No matter what, even if people see the worst in them, we may see what the, some of the roots and some of the causes of it, um, but we're supposed to see the best in them. Yeah. And we develop that. And if you're not doing that, then something's wrong somewhere yeah. in there. Something's wrong in your leadership development. 100%. Or somewhere, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think now there's, there's times where they'll do some, somebody will do something that's just completely stupid and you have to say, I'm sorry, you can't be on the team. Yeah. You know, that's, that's going to happen. But in general, we're called to love people. Yeah. Yeah. We're not God. We're not Jesus. We're, we're, you know, God's called us to help him. But overall, they are the men. You know, that's yeah. the man up there. Yeah. And those are his people. Yeah. They're not our people. Right. And so what, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to point them back to Christ. Yeah. Right? Like the Bible says, you know, we, we have to be connected to the vine. Yeah. And so are we the vine? Then we're in the wrong spot. Yeah. 100%. You know. And I love what you said is, is God is a God of restoration. Like absolutely. You brought that person through a journey with him, with yourself and, and brought him to this place. And I read this book called uh, Culture of Honor by Danny Silk. If you haven't read it, um, I told you a little bit about this, but and for every leadership team I ever have uh, from here until the end of the end of time, I will have them read this book because of the way it tells us to handle people. It's like our job as Christians is to bring heaven to earth, not to bring earth to heaven. And that's what you did because what earth wants to do, we see sin and we want it punished. We see sin and we want it punished. You know, guy cheats on his wife. Uh, uh, there's a, a killing by somebody or somebody steals or me personally even watching somebody run through a red light going, oh, I hope there's a cop. Like, I, like, I think you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but yeah. we're called to bring heaven to earth. And in heaven... Jesus already paid the price for all sin. He took on the punishment of sin so that you and I wouldn't have to. And that doesn't mean that you don't have to take precautions and, yeah, and take people right. out of that position. Right. But what it does mean is you're not kicking them out. You're not putting them back on the street and saying, hey, you know, but like you said, you're looking for the best and you're speaking to the glory inside of him so that it raises him up. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, because who are we? I mean, like, right. um, what if we were all in that position? Yeah. And what if what if somebody would have kicked us out? Exactly, exactly. I mean, I mean that's the only thing I, I can think of. And there was times where I was kicked out of some ministries for some dumb stuff that I did, or in, when I was younger. Yeah. And, you know, um, of, of just being dumb and yeah. just you know I was single and I was, you know, and uh, anyways I was just doing dumb stuff and, yeah. and and so I was removed from a position, but I was never developed, and so that really left the taste in my mouth of. That's not what we're supposed to do. We need to develop. We need to help people come back and get them back on track. Yeah. And so, I mean, because it, even our my marriage, there was a thing that happened and God restored it. And so I look at things in a very different lens mm. from restoration. And, yeah. And so, like, I don't, I don't play around with. I think that's the scariest line for me um, of anything. 
is that because God's put me in a position, uh, or even us as leaders and pastors, has put us in positions over people. That means he's entrusted us yeah. with their eternities. Yeah. That's kind of scary. And yeah. that's a lot of weight on us. Yeah. And so that's why I completely say, I'm going to do reality-based leadership. I'm going to tell them what's up. Yes, I'm, I'm going to use scripture. And yes, we're going to pray. That's all the, the basics, right? Yeah. But more than anything is is we have to love people. Yeah. We have to be there for them. That's that's what we're called to do. We're not just called here to to preach and, and, uh, and to... You know, carry this big thick Bible around. You know what I mean? It's 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 you have to be there for people. Yeah. And so when we grasp that, when we realize that it's all about people, and that's why Levi Lesko says we're gonna care for what Jesus died for. And yeah. that's the key phrase is Jesus died for. Yeah. Christ God gave his son yeah. for us. Who are we to to abolish that or who are we to knock on that? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's you're messing with real fire there. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's why I'm so passionate about people. Yeah. We're supposed to love people. We're supposed to be there for them. We're supposed to be the bridge. Yeah. I know there's a book about that, and I think some other people made a sermon about that. But it's literally what we're supposed to do. We are bridge makers, um, and we attach them to the vine. We don't attach them to us. We attach them to Jesus. Yeah. That's and if good. we're not doing that, then something ain't right. Yeah, that's really good. Well. That was all amazing, and, and uh, what we do here at the last two minutes is just give you a moment. You can talk about leadership. You can talk about anything under the sun, uh, and some revelation God's given you, something practical you want to share with somebody, just anything that God's given you, two minutes of, of just encouragement. Oh, boy, encouragement. Uh, I'm going to say just in this season, with all the craziness going on with COVID, with all the racial tensions with everything. I think that we need to be more in tune with in our prayer life, connected to the vine more than ever um, with scripture, know where we're at in scripture. Um, and we need to be prepared as leaders to, 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 to take on whatever comes um, because people now that, now that people have been in quarantine are starting to come out, they've developed habits the bad thing is, is the things uh, it's it's been a petri dish for mm -hmm. sin it's been a petri dish for depression mm -hmm. and so we're seeing more alcoholism from people who've relapsed we've seen more addiction to drugs we're seeing more um, domestic violence we're seeing more pornography coming back up to the surface we're seeing all kinds of these things that are on the rise now they have exploded and guess where they're gonna go when it's their time they're gonna come into the church so if we're not ready for that yeah I think we're missing the boat and um and then some of you get are getting nervous like oh my gosh what am i going to talk to this guy about porn how am i going to how am i going to talk how am i going to break this down how am i going to talk to this person about being faithful how am i going to talk to this person about dropping drugs you know you have to rely on the spirit you know acts 1 8 says and you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you you can call on that you can say god i don't know what i'm supposed to do i know i'm supposed to do something so God, give me the words to say to this person. And you go up to him, and more than likely, God's going to give you the words. You just have to trust, step out yeah. of faith, and God will give you the words to do it. So um, be ready. Don't be afraid to step out and rely on Jesus to give you the words, man. He will. Why? That. Because it's for his own church. Yeah. Why will he not equip you with the words and what to say for his own people? You know what yeah. I mean? And so don't be afraid. I'm sorry. Uh, be ready. Don't be afraid. And trust Jesus in everything that you do. And I guarantee you, um, you'll make impacts. Not on multitudes. Maybe you will. That'd be awesome. But I love it when I make an impact on one person. Yeah. And um, then we turn that one person into a disciple. And then they replicate. And then they replicate. And then they replicate. And then guess what? Your team grows. Your church grows. And heaven gets a little bit more packed. Yeah, so I love that. Down with that you know? That's such a great encouragement. One thing that I've been praying, and, and I, Jesus says it in the Gospels, is says, I only say what my Father says, and I only do what I see my Father doing. And that's what we need to be doing. The, the Holy Spirit lives within us. We have the ability to do and say what God would do and say to these people. And so that's such a great encouragement. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us here on More Than Mondays. It's been a great yeah, time. Love you, bro. Love you, too. Thanks for having me. Yep. 
you for joining us on More Than Mondays. I hope that conversation encouraged, challenged, and shifted your perspective as we begin this week together. Remember to like and subscribe so that you can get our newest episodes every Monday at 8 a.m.